Welcome everyone to Strictly Speaking. My name is Joshua Reeves. I am the director of University Theater at NC State. And tonight we have a awesome guest, a good friend of mine from undergrad, Mr. Quentin Fears. Quentin. Hey. <laughs> and so Quentin, um, you are a wardrobe stylist, a fashion stylist, a celebrity stylist. Tell us, what, what does that actually mean? So like the whole thing is that it kind of means multiple things, but a celebrity stylist usually, usually just focus on celebrities for like red carpet uh, appearances or like campaigns or for just anything. But that's more of like a marketing term. Um, but overall, a wardrobe stylist does like editorials for magazines, print, um, also commercials um, and appearances, music videos, um, anything you can think of that involves clothing and um, media. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. It, how did you get started with this? Like, how did you get into, into stylist? As you know what? It was like an accident. You know, I always grew up loving fashion. Um, I used to watch MTV's House of Style. Um, and <laughs> I, I loved it. I loved it. Um, and, you know, I loved watching the 90s supermodels, you know, Cindy Crawford, uh, Linda Evangelista, um, who else? Um, just all of that and like the, the 90s sort of um, fashion designers. Todd Alden was one of my favorites. Um, he was a big deal during House of Style if you actually really watched it. Um, and um, then I got into theater because I didn't think I could, you know, be in fashion. Because growing up in Greensboro, North Carolina, I thought in order to be in fashion, you had to know how to draw or like to be a designer or like an illustrator. So, and, but I also really love theater. So I got into theater, I got into the arts um, and I did that. And I, you know, I auditioned for a lot of things and was up for a lot of things, but I never really got anything. I got like a, you know, um, uh, an agent and I went on auditions, um, you know, auditioned for like One Tree Hills, Dawson's Creek, um, you know, and even, um, What's that? Uh, Gossip Girl and all these other things, commercials in New York. Um, but I really hated auditioning. And there was such a fear behind it. Um, it was just like putting myself out there in a way that made me feel super uncomfortable. Um, even though I do like being on stage, <laughs> but more like as myself than a character, I think. So um, I ended up meeting a fashion stylist, Robert Verdi who dresses Eva Longoria and Hugh Jackman. And he kind of became my mentor where I just like saw what he was doing and I was invited to events. And I saw like, I was a part of the process of like picking out clothes for Eva Longoria. Wow. You know, it wasn't like, I wasn't getting paid. It was like very casual, like friends, like hanging out, doing that sort of thing. But you know, and I also got to um, have dinner with Blake Lively at the Australia premiere event. So I got really pushed into the world of fashion at a very high level out of nowhere. Okay. So it kind of re, uh, like restoked my love for the industry and, you know, and I could understand how you do it um, because, you know, there's no concept of what a fashion style really means um, coming from where I came from. So seeing him do it at like a personal level, it really just kind of made me understand what it was. So at the same time that was happening, I had a friend, Coco, who was starting a magazine called Lady Gun. And Lady Gun's kind of like an indie buy slash like nylon. I don't think nylon's still around, mm -hmm. but you know, just kind of like a cool edgy magazine. Sure. So I helped her produce the first two issues. And then I ended up styling a photo shoot for it and people liked it and I ended up another photographer asked me to do something else. And then, then another magazine asked me to do something else. And it just kind of snowballed. I, I, I felt like an actor pretending to be a stylist. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did until, you know, one day I felt comfortable enough to say I'm, I'm a stylist. Okay. Well, yeah. it's usually how, you know, all of our guests so far have said, it, one thing led to another, to another, to another. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm an actor, I'm a designer, I'm a stylist. Yeah. That's very much in line with what, what we're doing. And so 
like you said, you you started out as an actor in in undergrad and wanted and was thinking about going that way. How has your education in the performing arts and your experience in the performing arts helped you with your current work as a stylist? Oh, like it's definitely like I still refer to what I learned in theater because when I was an actor, I never felt comfortable auditioning. I never felt comfortable during the you know the rehearsal process, but I did feel comfortable when I actually put on the clothes mm. because, because the clothes made me feel like I was the person. Okay. You know what I mean? It made me feel like really close to whatever that character was. So going into fashion and doing, because I come from a place where I do a lot of editorial fashion. So editorial is usually like what you see in beautiful magazines. Mm. And there's usually like a theme and there's like, there's like a tone and a, like a whole, you know, atmosphere or environment that's created through the images. So my acting background helped me to be like, who are these people? You know, the, the general questions that you would ask as an actor, like, who are they? What do, what do they want? And like, how do they feel? So, you know, each editorial is different. So, you know, for I worked for a teen magazine, Glitter, for a long time. I was like their senior stylist. So we would do a beach shoot and it would be like, two girls on the beach having fun and they're teenagers. So what would teenagers on the beach, you know, for spring want to wear? Mm -hmm. You know, what colors do they want to wear? How would they like to wear it? Um, so all of that, and we're also selling, selling a product. So how do we make it like intriguing enough for someone to be like, stop the, their attention, like flipping through magazines, like, oh, look at this, this image is beautiful. And also I love this skirt or I love this shirt. Like I want to buy it. So it's a little bit of like knowing um, what you want to sell and how you want to sell it and who these people are for sure. Yeah, it sounds like you're still telling a story. Yeah, there's still there's still storytelling. And, and yeah, I was gonna say objectives and your tactics right there, you know. Exactly. So yeah, it's definitely still storytelling, and that's what I think I really connected to with it. Um, you know, and and that's why I think I got into because Robert does mostly like I think. Um, like red carpet. Um, and I was drawn to more of the editorial because there's so much more story and like creating characters because, you know, the models, I mean, they're beautiful and they're like, you know, but they're kind of like a blank canvas really mm -hmm. until you decide what makeup they should wear and how they should do their hair and how, what clothes they should wear. I mean, it's all planned out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, um, and, and everyone, make sure you're checking out this Q&A. Julia, Jamie, Jackson, Emily, you know, get in there and ask a question for Quentin, okay? So you, you mentioned red carpet. You mentioned um, the uh, uh, editorials, commercial, things like that. Can you, can you kind of break that down for us? What, what are those um, major components of, of being a stylist? Um, you list on your website. You know, you have commercial, personal, red carpet, editorial. What what are those mean? Yeah, so I'll start off with editorial. So I do a lot of editorial, um, which honestly doesn't pay a lot, but it's beautiful. So artistically, I'm really drawn to it. And editorial is what you see in the magazines. It's what you see in Vogue magazine. It's what you see in um, Elle magazine. It's um, really um, just beautiful images selling... Uh, like clothing in like a very like fun, creative way. Um, and that's when you really can just tell, to tell a story. Um, but then there is commercial, which is more about selling a product. So, you know, I've been hired by Stella and Dot, which is a, um, a jewelry line. And so you're, I'm selling for this jewelry line, but it's not really about the clothes. So the clothing is a little more neutral. Or like if you think of um, Apple, when they had their commercials, they had a certain style and feel. Or like every commercial you see, there's like, um, what is it? I guess Motorola or any sort of like brand or car brand. They have a style and feel of like what their clothes look like for that. So that's more commercial. It's like selling the product. Personal styling is like, say, if like, you know, any person on the street wants to feel better about who they are, to work, uh, to have clothes for their um, work life or fun life. They hire a personal stylist to kind of give them a style, a signature style. Um, and 
what else? So though, I mean, I guess those are the differences. It just depends on like, you know, where if it's for a commercial or if it's for an editorial or if it's for just like, you know, a person. And then you red carpet, you know, we've all seen that. It's beautiful gowns and beautiful people on the red carpet for events selling their movie. So they want to look their best. They want to be eye catching. It's really dynamic. It's also like for those celebrities, it en encapsulates their own personal brand. So you have to take that in mind of like, who, who does this celebrity, what, what do they want to sell? Who are they, what do they want to like convey to the public in general? Well, I can tell you, unless you're doing uh, pajama pants, personal style, <laughs> because literally I've got pajama pants on right now under the screen. So just, you know, I might be able to hire you up. So if we should bring you to a question uh, before we hit some of these Q and A's, you know, what, you know, what does that, what would it cost for someone if I were to like come out and say, hey, Quentin, I, I need a personal stylist. You know, what would something like that run, go? Like what was the cost, what's the cost for something like that? So there is a range, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I, I'm on a, a app called Thumbtack. Okay. So there are people there who have, um, you know, I think they're newer at it. So they, they, they charge like $50 an hour. Um, and some people charge, you know, a couple of hundred dollars an hour. Uh, I charge one twenty five an hour. Um, but that's because I've been in fashion for 10 years now. I've also styled Macy Gray, um, Norman Reedus, um, and I've done, you know, um, uh, work with major brands um, yeah. so you know it, it depends on what the stylist has done and like their creative vision and so there is a range but you can get a good price and you know people are willing to negotiate so <laughs> yeah and that's just a personal question for me again these are going to have to go at some point so <laughs> um mitchell asks what is your favorite part about your job um, I guess being creative, really kind of telling the story through the clothing and like really making uh, beautiful images and, um, you know, and also every project's different, Not, no project's the same. Um, so I don't get bored. I'm, I'm, I'm still a really a creative person. So it's great to just kind of have uh, an outlet to, you know, showcase that. And, you know, in a lot of ways, I still feel like the actor, you know, I still feel like I am telling a story. It's just not me on the stage. Yeah. I put the models on the stage. Yeah. Awesome. Well, speaking of, you know, being creative, being the, you know, your favorite part of the process, Jackson asks, how would you describe your creative process? Like, take us from the time you, you know, you, you first speak with the client to when you're actually done. Like, you know, how does that work? That is a great question, Jackson. And so is it more about editorial or is it more about personal styling? And I think I've talked a lot about editorial. So I'll go into the personal styling part. With uh, personal styling clients, um, I talk to them about what they want the clothes for. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the most important. Is it because you are trying to get a new job? Or is it because, you know, a lot of people have um, issues that they're going through and they kind of like share it. It's like therapy a little bit. Like, is it like you got a divorce? Like I've had clients who've gotten a divorce and now they want to go dating again, or they don't fit the clothes that they have now and they need to still look great for, you know, life or they lost a lot of weight. So we talk about that, what they want the clothes for. Then we like go through their closet and see what they actually have um, and see what they might need to like include in their closet or maybe take away from their closet. Um, and then I talk to them about, you know, what they're, do they, you know, some people go on hikes all the time and some people, you know, are just at home doing Zooms or some people, we tell, we, I want to see what their like activities are like, what their personal life is like. See, you know, because that, that informs me of like what kind of clothes they need to wear or would want to wear. Um, and we talk about, you know, what colors look good on them, what colors they hate. If there's any part of their body that they want to, you know, work on or minimize or show off. And then from there, I usually create a mood board based on um, the conversation we previously had. 
So the mood board is images of what the new look would be like. So you can kind of get a visual of that. And after we do the mood board, um, pre-COVID, I would go shopping with them. <laughs> and we would go to stores and pick out things and have them try on things that reflect the new look from the mood board. So it sounds an awful lot like costume design, you know, in terms of character analysis, character, you know, research. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I think people take for granted clothing and like what it actually means. Because when you walk into a room, I mean, people, the first thing they notice, not just your face, is what you're wearing. And what you wear really does, um, and like determine how people, gives people an understanding how to communicate with you and what you're all about. I mean, like, let's take the show, like the Shark Tank, right? All those people are like in suits and ties and the ladies are in really beautiful, like cocktail business gowns or dresses, not gowns, but dresses. Mm -hmm. um, so, but if you imagine them in like sweatpants, would you take their advice? You know, would you be like, oh, I really believe you. You really have millions of dollars, you in this, these sweatpants. I mean, that's changing. If Jay-Z was up there in sweatpants, he'd be like, yes, but Jay-Z is like an anomaly. We already know who he is. So for us, you know, what we wear kind of gives people an interpretation of who you, who you are and how you want to be treated and how you don't want to be treated, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So um, it's really more important than I think people really think about. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree with that. I mean, you know. So, I mean, like, like, like what's that phrase? Like, Life is a play, you know? Life is, I don't is that Shakespeare? I don't know. <laughs> like, what is that? Who says that? I mean, but it's true. I mean, like, we all take on roles and we, we have roles in our life and our family lives and our work life and like the clothes reflect those roles. Agreed, agreed. So, hey, Lydia asks, and I, and I know you've mentioned that editorials are your favorite to do. Um, but just to make sure that I get Lydia's question, um, do you have a particular event or show that you enjoy doing the most? Oh, um, Lydia, so event or show? I mean, I guess, you know, I haven't worked on any shows and that would be great to work on a show, um, but that's a little bit different where like, if you're working on a TV show in particular, the styling is like, it's really, I mean, you know, it's. So you, well, you're styling a character, but on a TV show in, in particular, like you have to make sure that everything is laying like it was before, before the, the like last take. So it's really precise. Like you don't, you wanna make sure the collar's here, you know, if it was here and not like over here. So the take is like messed up. So it's very, very like kind of um, rigid um, and just precise. Um, and then, event i guess you know i really want to style someone for the oscars or the emmys that would be amazing i haven't done that yet i've done some smaller award shows but that would be amazing well you know on these events do you ever get to travel jamie's asking how often do you get to travel for projects events and where has where has been your favorite place to go what has been your favorite place to go okay jamie so before i lived in l.a I lived in New York City and I was working for Glitter Magazine and they flew me out to LA to style Caroline Sunshine, who at the time was like a huge Nickelodeon star and I got to style the cover. So that was a big deal. I loved LA, I fell in love with it and I was like, I'm gonna to move to LA after this. <laughs> so that was, that was amazing. Um, and then, you know, other projects I've flown to, you know, smaller cities like in Virginia or like, you know, um, just different places to do, um, uh, you know, uh, commercial shoots, mm -hmm. which are great because those are the ones that pay the most. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see here. You you mentioned shows um, and you've been on a few shows yourself. I've been on some shows, <laughs> yes. It's uh, Drastic Fit. <laughs> That's the one I want to talk about. I'm going to let this run in the background as you talk about it. Um, okay. But if you could just first tell us what is the show about and how was your, you know, what was the experience on that show? So Dress to Kill is a fashion competition show where top stylists across the country get to ballot out to become the 
uh, become a stylist for Glamour magazine or to have an editorial spread in Glamour magazine, which is a huge deal for someone who, you know, is up and coming or, you know, starting their career. Um, being in a Condé Nast uh, publication is huge because it's worldwide. I mean, Glamour is, uh, you know, close to being like Vogue. Um, it's, it's a really big deal. So that, that was the competition. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, I was at a park one day hanging out with a friend and it was an actor friend and she was looking at casting notices and she was like, someone's looking for like a fashion stylist who likes to be on camera. Um, you should submit yourself to this. And I was like, okay, sure. Like, whatever, <laughs> you know, like, it's not a big deal. And I did it like at the park. I think we were actually like watching uh, some Pee Wee Herman thing in like the park. Uh, like, you know, it was like very, really, really casual. Like 10 minutes later, I get an email back uh, being like, we want to cast you. It was like, I didn't even really have to audition. I think I did like one like quick audition with producers. Um, but as you, you can see, I got to, Whitney Port was the host. We got a model. There was a theme, like, I think this theme was like the road trip theme. Trip, so yeah. I had to style a model uh, for a road trip. Um, and the judges from Glamour Magazine decided who won and who didn't. <laughs> and, and I won that episode. <laughs> how was it doing it in that time crunch? I mean, I, what, it's 10 minutes, um, you know, to get- Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That was super stressful because we shot the uh, entire season or, like, I mean, I don't remember how many episodes. It's like 12 episodes in um, a week. And we would shoot like two or three in one day. So we would have to have a change of outfit for different days. So, and it, and it was exhausting. And you only get 10 minutes to style someone. And then you see there's like a huge closet of clothes and like not everything fit the model. Even though, you know, they're sample size, um, not everything fit the model. You have to come up with a quick theme, a, a quick color palette. I mean, it was actually really, really stressful. And um, at the same time, I was doing an editorial. Uh, I was like the project manager for an editorial for Glitter. And then I got like some other, I forget what it was, but I got like one of my first big commercial things too. So like, I was really stressed out. I think I even cried in one of the episodes. No. <laughs> Well, I mean, Julia asked, how has being on Dress to Kill changed your career? What did you learn from this experience? Well, the, the best thing about being on Dress to Kill was like the network, mm -hmm. um, meeting other stylists. Because before that, I kind of like, you know, I worked with Robert. I mean, I didn't, I'm not going to say I didn't work for him. I didn't work with him, but I was like following him around. Mm -hmm. So I got to see what he, he was doing. He was like, kind of like, I'm going to say he was my mentor. But other than that, I didn't know anyone really in fashion. Like, I didn't know any other stylists. So it was a really great way to network because, you know, I just kind of like started styling. Um, so that was the biggest thing. It was great to meet um, Whitney Port. She was lovely. Um, it was great to meet the people at, at Glamour. And then it just kind of, most of all, I think it just gave me confidence to be like, oh, I do know what I'm doing. I was about to curse. <laughs> I do know what I'm doing. So um, yeah, it just, it was like a confidence booster. I was like, oh, like it was validation. It was like, oh, I, I actually like, I, I lost one episode and then all the other episodes I won. I was top three and then I lost the final episode. So. <laughs> it looks like, it looked like a lot of fun to be honest. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So let's move on to, let's see here. Ah. So Jackson asked, what parts of your job are the most satisfying for, for you as an artist? Um, so, hey, Jason. Jackson, sorry, that was a great, P.S., by the way, that's a great name and that's a great question. One of the most satisfying parts of my job um, is, especially when working with personal, sty uh, personal styling, um, having people contact you uh, um, later and say, oh my God, like, it really didn't make a difference. Like, I feel so much more confident about who I am. Um, and um, I've gotten so many more compliments about what I'm wearing and it, it changed my life. And I've had multiple people say that personal side, like it's changed my life, you know, because I think people, they get in a rut of what they're wearing. They, they're wearing sweats all the time or all black. 
And I think, you know, I mean, we've all watched Queer Eye for the Straight Guy or whatever, Queer Eye, whatever it's called. But it is, it's true, like those little changes can really, you know, make people open up and blossom. So that's, you know, the most fulfilling. And then, you know, the editorials, they're beautiful. So that's satisfying to be like, I'm in a magazine. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk a bit about it. Here, I'll show you. I'm in a magazine. So this is a, a spread I did. Yay. And it's an industry magazine. Look at that. Yeah. So, you know, it's like published nationwide. <laughs> awesome. That, that's awesome. So, and, and take us through, what is a typical day pre-COVID of, of say, a, a photo shoot when you get there, you know, like you're there, the model's there, the photographer's there. Talk, talk us, what is that like? Okay, so even before getting there, the, there's a lot of work to be done, which I think like people see are fashion stylists or celebrity stylists and it's all glamorous. It's a lot of um, prepping beforehand. Um, the shoot day is the glamorous part. But before that, we, um, if there's a celebrity involved, we talked about, we talk about the celebrity. Um, we talk about what they're trying to promote. Um, so that's a part of it. Um, and then we decide if it's what location we're gonna shoot on, like if it's gonna be in studio or if we're gonna do a beach shoot um, or, you know, a neighborhood LA shoot or whatever. Um, then we decide the makeup and the clothing. And usually, I mean, sometimes I art direct, so sometimes I decide that, but sometimes the publication decides that. So, uh, they'll give me a mood board. Like I talked about with the personal styling, they'll give me a mood board of what they want the look to look like. You know, are we going for whimsical and colorful and tool? Are we going for more of like, um, you know, military, dark, stoic look. So once I get that mood board, um, I reach out to showrooms um, and I say, hey, I'm styling Norman Reedus for Lady Gun. And I will send them the mood board. I'm like, can I pull clothes? So then I have to go to, you know, five, six, seven places and go through their, their racks of clothes to pull clothes that most fit the mood board. So, you know, there's a lot of like packing of, of things and like moving things, especially when I went to, lived in New York. I didn't have a car in New York and no one has a car in New York. <laughs> so I had like Ikea bags, like four or five Ikea bags full of clothes and like afraid no one like, like hope no one tries to steal them because if they do, I'm responsible. Oh no. Of, and they're usually thousands of dollars worth of clothes. Like, so that's very scary. So once I get all the clothes and we, we finish with the theme, uh, we have the day of the shoot. Um, and what my approach is, I usually have the talent. If it's a model, I just decide what they wear because models have no say. <laughs> but if it's talent, I go with them and I'm saying, hey, is there anything you really like from this rack? And they're like, oh, I like this. So if they like that, I try to use that piece and include other pieces to make it work for the whole look that we're doing. I mean, and everything I pull is pretty much, you know, go along with the theme like this with Keisha Sharp. It yeah. was colorful, it was young, you know, it was um, sexy, there was tool. So it was youthful. She was um, just doing, um, what is it? What's the show? Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon was coming out, so this is a cover shoot. Um, so actually, I have the cover here. Oh, cover hold on. From that shoot. Um, so yeah, I talked to the talent about what they want to wear, and then we create the look on the fly, and then that's when the magic happens. Awesome. Well, yeah. so going back to those, those, those uh, the clothing, where do you get that from? Like, are there, is this from designers or these like you know do you, is there a costume shop house i mean that's what we're used to is is pulling from stock where do you where where do these come from so yeah i mean it's a little bit of both i mean mostly i pull from showrooms um and showrooms so this is kind of how it works excuse me different designers like buy into a showroom and so they pay for the showroom to hold their clothes and get them placement so they lend out the clothes for um, kind of um, 
it's a little bit of press for the the, the designer. Yeah. So they'll they'll be in like Sheen magazine and they'll see Keisha Sharp in their clothes, and then someone's going to be like, "Oh, Keisha Sharp's wearing this gown or whatever. Where is this from?" And they're like, "Oh, this is this is the the design the designers." So <laughs> like it's a little bit of like they lend it out for the press for the promo. So I reach out to the showrooms and I go to the different showrooms and pull whatever I think will work for the actual photo shoot. Yeah. So that's the process. Oh, I love that photo shoot. Yeah. That was so pretty. We were kind of going for like a more like elegant, high end, like um, slash Victorian romantic sort of thing. Um, you know, when this was happening, um, big sleeves, big puffy sleeves were becoming really big, um, really dramatic, poofy dresses. Um, so we wanted something really, you know, beautiful and romantic. And, you know, this is kind of like shows you the range, you know, like then I do a shoot and it's more, you know, like streetwear. So, um, and this was like at a park in LA and this is for Sheen. The last one was in Industry Magazine. This is Sheen Magazine. Um, and I really wanted to focus on like black, beautiful and like big black and like curly big hair and like, you know, something really simple, but with like this dynamic color of like red that really, really pops. Exactly. So everything else is like stark. Yeah, exactly. And the big hair, you know, it flows right into that red. I love it. Exactly. So that was really kind of that for that. And it's, it feels really strong and, a little more editorial. So that was a really fun shoot. And again, it was a lot, a lot of school. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have a kind of a disaster story that happened recently. Tell us about that. That's always the uh, <laughs> fun one. <laughs> that was so scary. So um, I pulled a gown for a photo shoot and it was with uh, Danielle Campbell. And the shoot isn't released yet. She's in, um, what is that? The originals. Okay. So, you know, it's like uh, Vampire Diaries, but it was a spinoff. It was on CW. She has like 2 million followers. She's kind of a big deal. Yeah, right? So that's another thing. Like, depending on your talent, the, it, it also opens up what you can get. So, you know, like, if it's, you know, someone who's done like, you know, a guest star on a little show that no one really watches, you can't get as much. But if it's, you know, Norman Reedus, you can get everything. Yeah. Um, so, and even that, you still can't get Versace or YSL for free. Mm -hmm. um, but so I pulled some clothes and I had this big, beautiful, puffy gown with a lot of tool underneath. And we shot it. She was barefoot. I returned it. And they look through it after you return it. And this gown's probably like two, three thousand dollars. Well, underneath there was rips in the tool. And like I was the last one to pull it. So I was to blame. Oh no. And I didn't like this is the first time, like I didn't do the, the due diligence to look under the gown mm -hmm. and to see like, but it was like a gown that has so much tool and like it was. Yeah, it was as big as the, the last photo you saw of the red tool. Yeah. Um, so there was a, a, a tear in the tool and like some burnt marks that I didn't do because first of all, there was no fire involved. And my, and Danielle was, you know, had no shoes on, but you know, I was stuck with the bill to repair it. So it was like $350 or something like oh. that. Oh, okay. which was, it wasn't that bad, but still. <laughs> Two three thousand dollars. I'm like, oh yeah. Is. So that was a that was the first and only time I've ever had anything like that. But now I'm like, you know, I've gotten the rhythm where I was like, oh, it's fine. But now I'm like, check everything, every little piece, and like I'm gonna start videotaping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, checking everything. Let's. Uh, how do we? What should we check before we leave home? Uh, we got a question right here. What fashion item should a woman never leave home without? Oh, hey, Gia. So Gia, what fashion items should a woman never leave home without? That is a really good question. Um, so I would say, you know, I think one of the most important things about what you wear is your shoes. 
So having a really nice pair of shoes, you know, I think it really kind of like gives a statement of who you are. Also a nice, I'm gonna say a couple of things. A nice bag, like what, I'm gonna say what you should spend your money on. You should spend your money on like a nice pair of shoes, good shoes, because people can say like, can tell like if you have a cheap pair of shoes on. You know, everything else can be, you know, lower quality or cheaper, like your shirt or your, your dress or whatever, but having a nice pair of shoes always makes a difference and having a nice back. You know, people will notice the back. It's like with guys, like a nice watch or a nice wallet. You know, those are things that really kind of can tell a difference between like if you're buying from certain stores or whatever and you know, your status in the world, those are, those are the things, um, yeah. And then a nice, I mean, coat too. Those things like a coat, you know, a good coat, so. Awesome. And, and I was gonna ask what about for the men, but it's not like a good watch, good shoe, good. Good wallet. Wallet, yeah. Those are the things I think you, if you're gonna spend money on anything, you should spend money on your wallet, your shoes, and your watch. Sounds good to me. Anything else, you can buy like Target, well, not Target. Well, yeah, Target. There's some nice fun things at Target. There's some decent things at Target. Target, thanks. <laughs> There's some decent things. Like you can buy like, you know, some t-shirts, uh -huh. you know, some quick like summer shorts, you know, it's fine. Yeah. All right, so let's look, let's see. Um, Julia asks, have you ever had a conflict with a director or a model about the design or your, uh, let's say your choices and, and how did you resolve it? That is a good question. No, I've never had a conflict with the model because models don't have a say. <laughs> I mean, they don't. They're hired to wear whatever they're supposed to wear. So they don't have, they don't really have a say. I mean, sometimes you can tell if someone doesn't really like something, but it's not about them. They're representing the brand. So if it's like a commercial shoot for like, let's say uh, J. Crew, you know, it, they usually have a, an, a, an outfit like for each model. So the, the model's job is to make that outfit look as good as it can. Um, so, you know, if they have an issue, then they have to like, you know, kind of fight through it and just make it look as good as possible. Unless there's something like, you know, there's more cleavage or like someone's, there's more nudity involved, that's, that's not okay. You know, they would have to know that up front. With celebrities, that's different. A celebrities, have, celebrities have more say in what they wear. Mm -hmm. Even though they kind of do and kind of don't, like with magazines, the magazines have the final word and the image is selected typically depending on the level of the celebrity. But, you know, when I work with a celebrity, I try to make sure they feel comfortable with what they're wearing. So I never really have that problem because I ask that um, ahead of time. Yeah, the celebrity is, you know, to put it, uh, you know, poorly. They, I mean, they're part of that product as well. They themselves are the product. Exactly. And they're, the, they're, they're their own brand. So you have to recognize them and their brand and the magazine's brand. But the models aren't brands. They're, it's, I mean, I hate to say it, but they're used as like a product, like, you know, to sell the clothes. So their, their job is just to sell the clothes. So they have no say, typically, unless they're a huge model, and that's different. Cool, 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 great. So Sheen Talk, The Journey, talk to me about this. What, what is Sheen Talk, The Journey? Yeah, so I've been doing this thing. I feel like my Southern accent's coming out way more. I love it. I feel oh. like I'm back home. <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling it out of you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Come on. <laughs> uh, Sheen Talk. I've been working with Sheen for a while. And um, during COVID, I think people were really dying for a way to connect with other people. Um, and I, I know I was. And um, I do come from a theater background. And um, before working with Sheen, this aspect of working with Sheen, I was um, doing our, like, uh, I guess not red carpet, but Fashion Week interviews. Mm -hmm. So at the very beginning of my career, I snuck into Fashion Week with a cameraman off of Craigslist. And I went up to celebrities and I was like, hey, do you mind talking to me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> because <laughs> I was trying to create a hosting reel. And that was another part of me like, I'm an actor pretending to be a stylist. I just didn't know what I was doing. It was like, hey, Rachel Zell, do you mind talking to me? And she did. Um, and in that environment, um, if one person of that caliber talks to you, then you're okay to talk to. So everyone opens up. So I started talking to like um, Tommy Hilfiger, 
yeah. um, Carrie Hilson and all these different people. So I had that background and I've always wanted to have that a part of my whole career and trajectory is to do more hosting and to maybe even having a, a fashion show one day where I talk about style or I style people for the show. Um, but so Sheen was like, hey, do you want to do this like interview of the celebrity or whatever? So I said, yeah. And um, I don't remember who it was first, but you know, it was just like trying to fill content and trying to fill time and, you know, people trying to connect with people and connecting with the, the magazine and the brand. So I, I did like one or two and they were like, oh, we love it. You're, you're doing such a good job. And they kept asking me. And then I was like, and this is where like the whole like tenacity and um, building something for yourself starts, you know? I was like, well, I want my own show every Sunday at three o'clock and I want it to be called The Journey. And they said, yes. So it's been great where I get to interview some of my friends who work in the um, you know, industry um, and celebrities about um, how they got into the career that they got into and kind of like what we're doing now and their, the progression of their career. And um, you know, to inspire other people to do the same and like pursue their dreams and not give up. And I think the biggest thing to, that I've learned from doing it is that um, you just have to do it, no matter on what level, no matter if you're not good or you don't have any experience, you just have to get up and like be like, oh, I can do this and make the first step to doing whatever it is. Great, great piece of advice, love it. Let's see here, what else we got? Um, do, do, do. Um, <laughs> so tell us if you could, where my next question is that that would be great if you can answer that one <laughs> let's see here uh oh yes this is a question i had for you so you know seeing all these uh so the clients and and the designers you've seen have you ever really been starstruck with a client or with you know seeing somebody just like oh my god it's you um you know what no not really I, honestly i mean i think i've gotten excited I get excited at first, initially. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna style this person. That's great. Because I'm like, this is gonna help my career. <laughs> but I mean, there are moments, I mean, the people I get the most excited about are people that I grew up loving. Mm -hmm. And I like, like Macy Gray. That was a huge deal for me because like, I remember being in high school or middle school, singing her songs and listening to her music. and. So those are the moments I get the most starstruck, but I try not to show that like on set because you know you you want them to feel comfortable and you want to be professional and you want to um, oh and there's Garcelle Bouvet, which is also an amazing amazing shoot. She is the newest member of the Housewives of Beverly Hills, and she's also the newest host on The Real. And um, I have something else coming out with her soon, so super excited about that um yeah so i try to treat people like they're people this is another one that was i was super excited about um because she is a 90s supermodel patricia velasquez um i remember her because i was into fashion so i remember her being in a lot of like i think she was a cover girl in the 90s um but now she's an actress and she was in the most recent thing i think was la la rona um, which was the Halloween movie from like a year or two years ago. It was like one of the number one movies at, in, in the country at that moment. So I got to style a supermodel. So wow. that was a big deal for me. Wow, that's awesome. So, hey, have you, have you gone back to theater at all since you kind of left that world? Or have you crossed over into costume design at all? Or anything that, you know, outside of styling? You know, I do have a commercial agent. Oh. So I've gone on some commercial auditions um, and I've done some um, reality TV moments here and there that, you know, I mean, people say it's real life, but it's still kind of acting. It's still not real. Yeah. Um, and for theater, no, but I would love to. Um, it's been a while since I've done anything on stage, but I would love to. Um, you know, I, I mean, I would love to get to a place where you know, I'm on a like a movie or a TV show kind of being like, hey, it's Quentin, the fashion stylist. That would be great. Yeah. Um, 
and as costume design, not costume design, but um, still like, like styling. I've done a, um, I've styled a, um, a short film, Tow Truckers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't say costume design because I think there's a, a more of an element of like construction and building costumes and knowing, knowing like the history and development of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, styling is more like, I just kind of like, these guys are um, tow truckers and what would a tow trucker wear? So it's a little less, you know, involved. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. He asks, what are some staple closet pieces you recommend? Do you have any advice for developing a style without breaking the bank? That is a good idea. Um, so, um, CC, right? Or oh, CC? Hey, CC. Um, developing a style without breaking the bank. I, you know what I say? Try on things. Try on things, things that you don't think that will look good on you or things that you don't like. Try it on because once you see it on your body, it might change your mind. Um, be open to different styles. Also, you know, Pinterest is a great tool. Go, go on Pinterest and look up men's fashion trends or men's style and like look through photos of like, you know, what you like and you can even do your own mood board. A lot of times I try to do that for myself. Like what's happening for the next year? Like, let me create like a, a style for myself so I can have a visual. So when I go into a store, I'm not just buying random stuff. I'm buying something that kind of kind of create a style for me. Mm -hmm. So, and pieces that I think, um, I guess men should have in general, um, you know, a blazer, a nice blazer, you know, and people are wearing them, not just like with a button down, a traditional like old man blazer. You can wear a blazer with a t-shirt, um, put on the blazer, a pair of jeans and, a, and sneakers, and you'll look sharp, but like casual and cool, mm -hmm. you know, and think of clothes as like elements, you know, so change it. So you can have like a pair of sneakers, or let's say you have a pair of sneakers on, a white shirt and a blazer. You change out the shoes, you put on like a pair of like nice shoes, a pair of brogues. Um, but if you don't know what a pair of brogues are, a pair of like, or like wingtips, they're like a nice dress shoe. You put on a nice dress shoe, changes the look. Then you put on a pair of sneakers, it changes the look. And then if you want to put on the dress shoe again and you don't want to wear the jeans, you put on a pair of slacks, it looks a little more elevated. Mm -hmm. So think of each piece as like an element and think about like, what does that mean? Like what, so a pair of jeans are like, what do you think about when you see a pair of jeans? It's casual, it's rugged, you know, it's city life or country life, you know, it's like every day, you know, or slacks, maybe a little more office, a little more refined. So start to think about your clothes in, in, that, in those terms of like, what does this mean? Like, what do I get from this piece of, of clothing? And in terms of the entire look, so how much do you have a say in, or, or maybe you do have a full say in, in hair, makeup, you know, what, you know, what is it that you, do you ever see the entire look and, and how much are you involved in choosing, you know, the makeup and the hair? So yeah, if I'm just styling it, I have no say in that. I just kind of pick the clothes. But when I'm on set, usually the way it works is they look, the makeup artists and the hair people look at what the, the actual talent's gonna wear. And then they kind of, we already kind of have an idea of the makeup, but they, they know more of where they wanna go with the makeup depending on the look. Um, so there is more of a say with the clothes, but you know, it's still a collaborative art and you, you, know, you don't wanna step on anyone's toes and you do, it's, I'm not doing the entire thing by myself. But if I'm art directing, then I decide who the photographer is. I decide who the makeup artist is. I decide who the model is. And I, you know, oh. decide everything, the whole thing. And how, do, you, do you, as a collaborator with the makeup artist, the hairstylist, do you all meet before the shoot? Um, or is the shoot the first time you guys kind of see each other for that project? You know, that's a lot of times it's the first time we ever meet, even meet sometimes. Okay. Um, a lot of times, I mean, it, people work with people they know and they like. So you get a group and like people start hiring the same people over and over again because you have a vibe, there's a shorthand, um, 
you know what people are thinking. Um, so th there's that. But um, yeah, I mean, before that, we usually just kind of like go off the mood board. And that gives us, informs us of like what the look should be. Ooh. Well, everyone, we've got a few more minutes left. So make sure you get those questions in if you have any more last minute questions. And I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, Julia's question, which typically is our final question. But I think we can get one more in if you throw it out there real quick. Quentin, what would be your advice for an aspiring stylist or an artist? Yeah, Julia, that's a great question. And um, like I said before, I think the first thing is to just like get up and do it, you know, like even if it's on a smaller level, um, if you, you know, if you don't have models, you don't have like access to showrooms, um, use your own clothes and style your best friend or whatever. Produce your own photo shoots, style yourself and post it on Instagram. Um, you can, I mean, this is, I mean, people still do this. It's not great, but you can buy and return. We know places that you can do that. You can do a photo shoot, you know, dress the people in the, those clothes and then return them, um, you know, because they're, they're not going to be damaged or anything like that. Um, but also just really kind of um, create relationships and, you know, keep those relationships going because this is very much like, who you know sort of business and you know I, I it, it is about you know the name and who you're associated with you know i could say that i'm a wardrobe stylist but being a, saying that i'm a celebrity stylist sounds better you know and um styling um garcelle bouvet kind of gives me elevates me as a stylist so being nice to everyone um keeping relationships going and believing in yourself and, and doing the work and not being lazy and going to pick the clothes up, you know? Yeah. And figuring out your ways to make your own things happen. Like how I started working with Sheen, they didn't just like, hey, can you work with me? I produced a photo shoot on my own and I was like looking for black magazines that would want a black model. So I was like looking and I was found Sheen and I submitted my photo shoot and they, they liked it. And they publish it. And then the next time they're like, hey, do you want to shoot this celebrity? So making opportunities for yourself. What, excuse me. Well, Jackson has our last question, and it's related. What would you say to someone who has never really involved themselves with developing their own style but wants to start? Okay, so I guess, <laughs> Jackson, what I would say first is, like seeing what your style is now like what is your style now determining that first you know um are you like do you only have joggers in your closet sweatpants you're only having all are you only wearing all black are you only wearing prints so seeing what that is first and then going to a place like um pinterest or maybe seeing celebrities that you kind of like want to emulate or look like and kind of gathering that knowledge. And then you can see like, like when you go and buy things, you're like, oh, I'm gonna buy something similar to that. So I think that's a great way to kind of start. Yeah, and a great <laughs> as well. So Quentin, thank you so much for coming and speaking for us for an hour about you know, your career and your journey. As, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you all for joining us tonight to listen to Quentin and his, uh, his work as a celebrity stylist. Um, please be sure to check us out tomorrow. Tomorrow night we have Stephanie Ula from uh, the National Tour of Hamilton, currently playing Angelica. And we also have uh, Jenny Eli on Thursday night with Jamie Melma. He'll be uh, interviewing Jenny. She is a, 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 production, a, a production manager with Lucas Films. Quentin, it's so great to see you, man. Thank you again. Everyone, uh, check out what we have coming up next on this video and have a great night. All right, thank you for having me. Have a good one. Two, Quentin, bye.